It's just a suggestion, and uh, again, I commend you. It was a great show. Thank you. All right, no problem. Um, I'm, I am here to serve. Thank you, Phil. Coy in Missouri. Hello, Coy. Yes, sir, John. I want to get this real quick here. I've got a break coming up here in three minutes. Uh, I've t been, I took the spotlight, you know, for since it was, you know, its inception uh, and uh, when it was Liberty Letter and everything. And sometime, I don't remember, it was in the late 70s, early 80s, might have been before, but they had an interview with a pilot. He was a commander or something like that. And he was flying a plane for our government. Now, they, did, they didn't say how big a plane or how much how many crew members they had, but he retired from the military, and he was upset about what he was doing for uh, before he retired, and he he gave an interview with Spotlight, and he had a big big article on what happened to the gold in Fort Knox. And what this fellow said in this article in the Spotlight, is probably in their archive somewhere, that he took and flew, go, he went from Fort Knox to France and took the Gold, one load at a time from Fort Knox, and gave it to the Bank of France, which was the Rothschild Bank of the time, before it was supposedly nationalized. Yeah, you know, France bought it from the Rothschilds for three times what it was worth. Well, and and in this edition of the International Forecaster, uh, Mr. Chapman goes through how Mr. Brown over there uh, sold to the Rothschilds at uh, bargain basement prices when gold is what as as it uh, what did you say, Bob, at its lowest. Right, it was two hundred and seventy-five dollars an ounce on average. They sold approximately half of the gold that the citizens of England had, and the reason they did that was twofold. Uh, number one, uh, to be able to cover uh, a short position that I think J.P. Morgan Chase had, and the mm -hmm. other was to uh, move the uh, gold off into private hands. And at the time, they said that the Rothschilds at different auctions, there were a number of them, had bid and taken it down for clients, the gold that was for sale. And so the Rothschilds were the major buyers. Well, only one, only have one last thing to say here. The impression you got from this article was that they just drained every bit of gold out of Fort, Fort Knox and gave it to, you know, the Bank of France, which is a Rothschild bank. And that's all I have to say. Just let it pass it on. Thank you, Coy. I appreciate it. Uh, folks, go to republicbroadcasting.org, and our columnist, uh, Joel Skousen of World Affairs Brief, he wrote an article, How the Holocaust Gives Israel Immunity from Criticism. It's well worth the read. We'll be right back. Yeah, quoting Bob Chapman here out of the International Forecaster. He says, in addition, much of the central bank gold was either pilfered outright or was virtually given away by the people like Gordon Brown of England, the king of the fire sale gold, who sold half the UK national gold reserves to the Rothschilds and other Illuminists at the bottom of the gold market. The remainder of the UK gold reserves is probably leased out or gone to oblivion like the US gold. <laughs> the UK, by the way, the people of the UK, Bob writes, are minus eight billion dollars and counting on that one while the Rothschilds are on the plus side of the equation. Folks, we're going to put an end to this. I am tired of the money masters out there, the manipulators and the liars. I mean, look what they've done to this entire planet. They popped an entire planet inside out. It's almost unimaginable. Bob and Robbie, I can, I can see why people don't believe in the world conspiracy. You know, they, they, they're they more likely to believe that, well, uh, you know, that guy down at the bookstore back in 1963 might have had a, uh, a shooter on the hill as well. But they cannot wrap their minds around the manipulation of the fiat currencies to steal everybody's wealth. It is beyond their imagining. Can I follow up on that caller's question? Please do. Um, the Gold Confiscation Act of 1933 was done to stop the citizens uh, run on gold, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 obviously that was against the citizens. But foreigners were still uh, up until um, uh, 1971, when Nixon finally cut the last strings of gold. But foreigners could still de demand gold uh, uh, in lieu of dollars. I mean, George, uh, George, uh, uh, Charles de Gaulle. 
uh, famous statement was, uh, yeah, we like you Americans, but we, we just prefer to get paid in gold as opposed to dollars. And, and, and segueing that into obviously, uh, Rob Kirby's report, um, it seems as though, um, there's another run on gold taking place. Where foreigners don't want to accept U.S. dollars. They want gold. I think you're right. And I've thought that for the last couple of years. Because when I saw it start appearing, I said, hey, they're at the bottom of the barrel. And anybody who would learn of coin melt being used knew that it was the only coin country that had it. And it was the U.S. So they had to be the sellers. And so that's who's been selling into the market. And what they do is they uh, exchange it with, say, Germany or France or whatever, and they take some of their deliverable gold and deliver it against the positions that they've sold. And the French or Germans or whoever re-refine the gold and put it back into their coffers, so to speak. And so that's what's been going on for the last couple of years. They're close to being out of gold. I mean, what has happened is financially, via the Fed Reserve, the bankers, the Wall Street, and uh, the insurance industry, uh, and, and part of corporate America, have totally disemboweled the United States. They have no gold. They have no industry to speak of left. And all they have is a military that's spread all over the world and tremendous debt. The game is over for America. I mean, the way back is another 20 or 30 years if we could stop it right now. And we can't do that without getting rid of the Fed and having tariffs on goods and services. Yeah. And if, we're, if we can't get that, then the result will be revolution. You, you have been pushing that for a long time, and, and you're exactly right. Folks, imagine the day that the government basically ran itself, all the expenditures that they, they made, that they basically did it off of taxes uh, and the tariffs. You know, it, it didn't come out of your pocket. It didn't come out of what they glowingly referred to as the gross domestic product, which 70% of the, that what is generated was people borrowing through the credit markets. I mean, this whole thing has been popped inside out, and, and people, guys, don't understand. They don't even understand... The people who listen to this program understand the subtleties. The people out there generally in America don't even have the slightest clue as to what just transpired in this country. They don't have a clue because they don't know what fractional, and I got chewed out for this when I, somebody called me on us when I always called it fractionalized reserve banking. Well, it's fractional reserve banking, but I always call it fractionalized because I feel minimized and fractionalized every time I deal with this currency. I've been saying it that way for 15 years. Please don't try to change me now. At any rate, people, I mean, Bob, you, you put in your, folks, I'm telling you, it's worth its weight in gold to get the international forecaster, because this guy has been shooting straight from the hip for many years, telling people months and sometimes years ahead of the curve are what people would begrudgingly admit. This guy is that far ahead of the curve. In your current newsletter, you said the U.S. economy shrank at 5.7% annual pace in the first quarter, capping the worst six-month performance in five decades and reflecting de uh, declines in housing inventories and business investment. The contraction in gross domestic product was smaller than the government estimated last month. Revised figures from the Commerce Department showed today in Washington the drop was larger than the economists had forecast. I'll tell you the rest of this on the other side. Mr. Chapman makes the observation that Mickey Mouse might be working the handheld computer. We'll be right back. <laughs> 